I'm I'm an institutional tether buyer, so I know that it's not it's not actually coming out of thin air. Like I'm one of the people who buys tether for US dollars. So to hear people say it's being generated, there's no deposits and they must be generated out of thin air. When I read that, I just like think that's so fucking hilarious. These guys have no idea what they're talking about, and they're saying these these claims as if they know things. Eric, can you explain a bit how the process of buying tether works? Uh, I'd rather not. Tether, one of the most controversial yet successful cryptocurrencies in the entire space. Some live by it and put their hard-earned money into it, while some despise it, blaming it not only for Bitcoin manipulation, but also for lying to investors about its backing. Who should you trust? This is the story of Tether, the virtual money printer. Bitcoin has been booming, with over 6,000% gains since 2015, outperforming the stock market 150 times over, even during one of the largest growth periods in US stock market history. The success of Bitcoin has spawned over 2,000 different cryptocurrencies called altcoins, all fighting for a place in the over $280 billion market. Tether, one of these altcoins, is currently the seventh largest cryptocurrency in the world, with over $4 billion in market capitalization. Although Tether is the seventh largest cryptocurrency in the world, it is the most traded cryptocurrency, with over $20 billion in current day-to-day -day trading volume. Tether may have been created with good intentions as the first revolutionary cryptocurrency stablecoin. However, as we have seen time and time again, money is always king. And when you have control of billions of dollars without any regulations or checks, a lot can go wrong. It all started in January of 2012 when cryptocurrency developer J.R. Willett described the possibility of building new currencies on top of the existing Bitcoin protocol. With this newfound idea, Willett went on to create his own cryptocurrency, Mastercoin, and an associated Mastercoin Foundation, later renamed the Omni Foundation, in order to promote the use of his new second layer technology. This protocol would lay the foundation for the Tether protocol and team, as two of the original members of the Mastercoin Foundation Brock Pierce and Craig Sellers would later become the two most influential founders of Tether. In July 2014, RealCoin was announced by co-founders Brock Pierce, Reeve Collins, and Craig Sellers as a fiat-backed cryptocurrency stablecoin on the Omni Layer protocol. On November 2014, Tether CEO Reeve Collins announced that the project was being renamed to Tether as they did not want to be associated with altcoins as stated by Mr. Collins. In addition to this rebrand, Tether announced new partnerships in the cryptocurrency space, including agreements with the Hong Kong-based Bitcoin exchange Bitfinex, as well as fellow Brock Pierce-based startups. The newly rebranded company Tether also announced that it would be opening a private beta for three fiat-backed coins, US Tether, Euro Tether, and Yen Tether, with a statement that every token would be 100% backed by its original currency. In January 2015, the cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex enabled trading of Tether on their platform. Although there would be multiple allegations Bitfinex and Tether were somehow connected, both companies repeatedly denied the claims, stating that they were two separate entities. However, with the leak of the Paradise Papers in 2017, it was found that Bitfinex officials Philip Potter and Giancarlo Devasini were responsible for setting up Tether Holdings Limited in the British Virgin Islands in 2014. It was later confirmed by both Bitfinex and Tether that the CEO of both firms is J.L. Vanderveld. So, who are these people? Phil Potter, one of the officials who set up Tether Holdings in the British Virgin Islands, is Bitfinex's chief strategy officer and is an ex-employee of Morgan Stanley, who was fired for boasting about his lavish lifestyle in the New York Times. Giancarlo Devasini serves as the exchange's chief financial officer. In 1996, he was caught for pirating and selling a substantial volume of Microsoft software. So, who is the CEO, J.L. Vanderveld? John louis Vanderveld has never had an online interview and has a surprisingly sparse internet footprint. 
Although there is evidence of his existence, there is a surprising lack of transparency due to the fact that he owns one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, Bitfinex, and the seventh largest cryptocurrency, Tether. Some people would say that it is not his job to be in the public eye, and that Bitfinex has the right to ignore people online questioning what they are doing. However, whenever you are dealing with billions of dollars of customers' funds, and a stablecoin that could theoretically allow you to print money, most would say that there needs to be a certain level of transparency, especially in the finance industry after what has happened in the past when you trust bankers. With the variety of overlapping executives on both the Tether and Bitfinex team, it's no secret that a majority of Tether tokens flow through the Bitfinex exchange. Both Tether and Bitfinex received subpoenas last year from the United States CFTC. However, they have not publicly released their reasoning for doing so, whether it be illegal activities that customers are doing on the Bitfinex exchange or the Bitfinex executives themselves. One of the Justice Department's main concerns about Bitfinex and Tether, aside from their claim that Tether is backed one for one by USD, which we will talk about later, is how Tether handles these new coins and why they tend to flow through the Bitfinex exchange before entering into the market. The concern arose after University of Texas John Griffin wrote about how Tether trading has seemingly been underpinning and manipulating Bitcoin. Griffin produced these findings using algorithms to analyze the blockchain data. His findings suggest that purchases with Tether are timed following market downturns and result in sizable increases in Bitcoin prices. Less than 1% of hours with such heavy Tether transactions are associated with 50% of the meteoric rise in Bitcoin and 64% of other top cryptocurrencies. Griffin says a majority of this manipulation is done by the flow clusters below round prices, inducing asymmetric autocorrelations in Bitcoin and suggests incomplete Tether backing before month ends. He says that these patterns cannot be explained by investor demand proxies, but are most consistent with the supply-based hypothesis where Tether is used to provide price support and manipulate cryptocurrency prices. In simpler terms, Griffin is stating that Tethers were used to buy Bitcoin at crucial market moments in order to maintain its extreme growth, and that this couldn't just be explained by simple investor demand. If these claims prove to be true, Tether could have been one of the largest contributing factors to the extreme continued growth of Bitcoin up to $20,000, as well as a helping hand in the altcoin boom. As of right now, this is all speculation, and although there is some proof of Tether manipulation, that doesn't necessarily mean that Tether itself was doing it. Currently, both Bitfinex and Tether are being investigated by a Bitcoin rigging criminal probe focused on their tie to Tether by the US Justice Department and CFTC. Their main goal of this investigation is to see if the meteoric rise in Bitcoin was purely driven by consumer demand or was part partially created by market manipulation. Tether has long said that USDT is tied one for one to US dollars. However, at the beginning of 2018, after months of promises, Tether failed to release a professional audit, and their partnership with their auditor, Friedman, was dissolved, with Bitfinex saying, and I quote, an audit would be unattainable within a reasonable time. It was later alleged by New York Attorney General that Bitfinex and Tether may have been involved in an $850 million cover-up. Bitfinex and Tether's banking problems began in 2017, when they lost relationships with Taiwanese banks as well as a link to the US through Wells Fargo. After repeatedly getting denied by multiple banks due to how hard it is to police cryptocurrency transactions, Bitfinex entrusted $1 billion in commingled client and corporate funds to the Panamanian firm Crypto Capital Corp. Bitfinex allegedly used this firm to wire dollars to traders for withdrawals. It was found that despite the sheer amount of money it handed over, Bitfinex never signed a contract or agreement with Crypto Capital, the Attorney General wrote. By mid-2018, executives at Bitfinex and Tether suspected Crypto Capital had lost or stolen the money, and Bitfinex hasn't been able to recover the roughly $850 million, she said. None of this had ever been disclosed to investors. In an effort to try to recover the roughly $850 million, executives at Bitfinex and Tether created a series of conflicting corporate transactions in which Bitfinex gave itself access to roughly $900 million of Tether's reserves. 
It was at this point that executives shifted most or all of Bitfinex's losses onto Tether's balance sheet, making Tether no longer backed one for one by US dollar. It was later found in April of 2019 that Tether only had enough reserves to account for approximately 74% of outstanding coins. Since then, the number of tethers has roughly doubled, with Bitcoin breaking out of its bear market trend. When dealing with billions of dollars without any regulations in the cryptocurrency space, there are bound to be scandals. There has been an immense amount of pressure from the cryptocurrency community and external entities on Bitfinex and Tether, and that has allowed us to learn the truth. However, I would suspect that similar things happen throughout the cryptocurrency industry every day to many of the largest exchanges and corporations. Cryptocurrencies are still in the period of mass adoption and regulation, and as we start to transition more and more into this phase, the real use of cryptocurrency will start to be put to work. The industry is clouded by profits, so much so that cryptocurrency traders don't even hold their own funds, and end up trusting an entity that is likely even worse than their very own bank. This has been Crypto Advisor with the story of Tether, the virtual money printer.